Friday, taking a half day from the office to head to the drum shop. Bill has a wedding gig tomorrow, and I was in Tennessee all last week working on the parents' house. Router Mill scored grand prize in the Instructable Contest. 250 ducats. I'll put it towards the house. Looks like the bases are strong and pressed. All these snares are strong, waiting to be pressed. Then they need snares. This one's pressed, getting snares. This one's being pressed. Yep. I'm going to come up with a better method to do this accurately and consistently. Repeatedly. Yeah, that's the word I wanted. So I'm gonna measure Take some measurements on this thing and then take the tension off the press, see how much it moves and see where it moves, and then figure out how to make it not do that. The issue that occurs some of the time, not all the time, is that once you take it off the press, uh, the hoop will move. I think it's just maybe you're cranking more on one side than the other side. Or you got more strength and stamina out of the gate. And once you get all the way around, you're kind of losing some of your oomph. Or we're just overthinking everything, which is possible. Or what? We're just overthinking everything. Oh, I mean, well, we're, we're definitely doing that. But that doesn't necessarily mean we're wrong. We get a wicked whack. In its former life, this was the start of a purple sunburst drum, and it was abandoned. Now it's going to be dyed black and sprayed black of some sort. So we'll see how that turns out. We'll start with the dye first though. Get it all over our hands too. That's a must. I did the first coat around the circumference of the drum, full depth, came back, did a circular pattern across the drum all the way around, and then I did a third light pass to try to even everything up around the circumference again. I'm gonna let it soak in. It's looking pretty good. It might not need a fourth coat. Probably wouldn't hurt. If you want blacker than black, USMC black leather dye. It's the way to go.
Good ass hardware. Sweet ass hardware or sweet ass hardware? Uh, sweet ass hardware. I believe sweet ass hardware would be a different thing entirely. Two different size gut. Yep. So we'll do the thin stuff, um, which will be more responsive when playing at quieter dynamics. And then the larger diameter gut um, will, you know, help that when you're playing loud, you know, it, it'll really kind of open those up. And the idea is more dynamic range. Because if you can't play quiet, on a drum, it's not a musical instrument, it's a noisemaker. Number four out of ten on the press. Yep. Oh, man. It's a freaking workout. Gotta play a wedding tomorrow. My hands are gonna be so freaking swollen, I won't be able to play. <laughs> As if I didn't have enough problems with my hands playing bass anyway. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Got quite the ensemble there with your blue boxers and your pink and black socks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah man, style. This drum is getting sanded back for a re-dye because missed glue squeeze out. And when you miss that, the dye doesn't soak in and it looks bad. This is going to suck. Two coats of dye. The offensive glue splotches are gone. Getting what looks like splatter, but I think it's part of the grain. So we're gonna let this dry. Hand sand it back 320 and do another coat. While that dries, I'm gonna take apart this drum that Bill got for repair slash restoration, make it playable. Metal drum, wooden re-rings, possibly built as a toy, we don't know. Yeah, I don't even know where that's from, to be honest. I mean, I'm assuming it's an American made. I honestly, I don't know. It's weird. Let's take it apart. Yep. Oh, jeez. Gotta go to the gym. Yeah. We gotta work on that freaking premier, premier field drum too. That was nowhere near as cool as this one though. This actually has all the ears. And yeah, they're, and they're, they're torn. They're in pretty good shape, all things considered. Like, I mean, I think I'm gonna cut bearing edges on it because they're currently flat and that's not really gonna work out. But like. It's not in that bad of shape. I mean, sandblast these. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. This rope. This rope is harder than your uncle on my head. Hey. -o. Oh, jeez. Oh, jeez. What do I do with my little tool? Actually, seriously, what do I do with my little tool? 
Jim is gonna be pissed. It's on top. Oh. Dumbass. Come on. Oh, jeez. That didn't sound good. <laughs> Balling in there. It's held down by a nail, two nails. Hmm. I kind of like that. Don't break the flesh hoop. Hmm. Yeah, definitely don't break those. I mean, I've broken them and fixed them before. It's not the end of the world, but it is a pain in the ass when you do it. I had that little 10 inch uh, uh, JC Haynes drum, that kid's drum that I, I restored a while back. I broke the flesh tube on that and it was like this tiny little 10 inch drum and I, I had no choice but to repair it. And that was pretty freaking annoying. I did though, but. Now oh, we're stuck, Captain. <laughs> we are stuck. All right, thus far, the hooks have been sandblasted. All the ears were masked off to sandblast this little metal band. Clean up quick. Hitting the ears with hide rejuvenator. Old hide stripped from the flesh hoops. Then I'm gonna clean the hoops with Dawn dish soap and try that on here and see what happens. Ears cleaned up well. Hoops are still a bit dingy. That's after two rounds of cleaning. This shell's got tons of corrosion. It's like plated some sort and it all bubbled up. Like reacted with the, uh, the hide head. I don't know. Not sure how far he wants to go with it if we're gonna leave it all crusty. You'd probably have to leave it crusty. You'd have to wire wheel it back or sandblast it or something. I don't know. What's up? Hey, Jim. Hey, Jim. Hey, Jim. Hey, Jim. He's on a mission to beat up his paws. Yeah. Whew. Did I mention this is a workout? Yeah, the old mitts are going to be toast. Big tailing. I think that's number five that he's working on. I gotta sand this little Betty back and see where I get. Snares on number five. Is that five? Yep, five. Make sure they kind of do what they're supposed to. Being wet, that's pretty good. Yeah, Tona changes the gut drives. Yeah, yeah and then not trimming the snares until then, not tying the drag rope in case they need to be pressed again. Yeah, yeah, in case there's more adjustments. Just like that. Well, that's half of them. Yeah. For a delivery date of next Thursday. Yep. Yeah, I mean, I, I anticipate there's there's still going to be some some fine tuning and adjustment to be done. I don't I don't expect to just get all these right on the first try, but um, but that's why I'm trying to 
knock out as many as possible at once and then you know if next week a couple of them have to come apart and get you know reassembled it won't be that big of a deal. I don't know. We'll see what happens with the snare dry. This drum came in today. 36 inch bass. Customer picked it up in a pawn shop for I think 50 bucks. Once the wrap removed, and then depending on what the wood looks like underneath, we go from there. If it just needs some cleaning up or re dyeing, or if it's totally trashed and needs veneer, it's gonna be touch and go. But all the hardware looks good, nothing's cracked, nothing's majorly pitted. Yeah, a couple bent tension rods, but nothing bad. I mean, the hoops are kind of, hoops are kind of toast. They're doing that thing where they just make straight lines from lug to lug, you know, which the bent hoops seem to do over time. Djembe that needs a new head. It's not good. Nope. Third pass went on pretty even. Still got some of those. Little lines, it's just how the grain's taking it. Those look sweet. In the meantime, you wanna spin me a yarn about uh, that nice black 28 inch kick drum we worked on last time? Yeah, I do. So, packed it up really well. Not well enough. Uh, in shipping, it looks like something got dropped on it because like, <laughs> top of the drum is like, scoop! Uh, the, the aluminum U-channel on the heads are like all bent, like one of the hoops is kind of toast and uh, on the inside of the drum the re-rings are just like totally cracked out where, where the impact was, um, which has me kind of annoyed because I'm like, I, you know, that joinery is supposed to like protect from that sort of thing, but on the other hand, if it was enough of an impact to like, it, it like the, the U-channel for the heads is like crushed. So it got hit hard. And they either uh, dropped it or they piled other boxes on top of it. Yeah, or both. <laughs> Probably both. So I, uh, I, he sent me a bunch of pictures and I talked him through how to repair it himself. Like good enough to get the drum to be like playable and, and like reasonably, you know, usable. So he ordered some new heads and he's, he's working on fixing it. And in the meantime, we're processing the insurance claim. And I'm just gonna make him a new drum and send it to him at whatever theater they're in at the time the drum is done. So that sucks, but at least it's something that like, you know, he'll be able to patch it up well enough to use it to perform for a while. But I am not happy to have to like, you know, spend all that time making that thing and then- Crunch. Know, some, yeah. That sucks. I couldn't resist. One of the hoops is toast. Handful of the tension rods are bent. I think we have some of the tension rods around here from the last time I restored one of these. But look at this. Nothing's blown out. It looks brand new, dude. It's crazy. So the these I worked on that, that had this, like everything looked like this. It was smaller, but it all looked the same. It was from 1962. Launched the Cambridge Symphony. It was a 32 inch, but otherwise identical. I don't think this is that old. I mean, the top of this bearing edge is a little ragged. Like, yeah, it's not. They cut it, but they didn't go back and finesse it or oil it. Yeah, and since we're taking the wrap off, oh, is the wrap in the seam? God. That sucks. It's in the scarf joint. It's it's fine. We can cut it and it, it'll be okay. But that's super annoying. Now this guy lives local and he dropped it off, so at least it won't get smashed to shit. It was going too easy. This wrap is not gonna come off without a fight or a heat gun. Hopefully the heat gun works, but 
It's probably old school adhesive that doesn't mess around. And we'll probably have to get into it next time, but with Bill going to drop off the Hellcat drums on Thursday, jury's out on Friday shop day. Might be waiting two weeks for this one. All right, that little snare drum taken apart, the bass taken apart. Still need to wrap that Bollywood snare. The piccolo snare's done, needs to be picked up. I think we're waiting on some hardware for this bad boy. Once the Hellcat line's out of here, we can probably revisit the Demon guitar for Elder Scrolls. It's gonna get fun, hopefully. Fun or annoying. Finish these five. Time to wrap it up. Made good progress though. This black die, man. Whew. Awesome. That's called the black metal drum. It's actually getting some spikes mounted to the hoop. That's gonna be interesting.